All right, it is July 27. This is two days. This is the second day. Yesterday was the first. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yesterday was the first day after the refeed, where I just like ate a crap ton of sushi. Today is the second day. Yesterday my weight was slightly higher. Today it was it dropped. Where did I weigh in yesterday? I can't. I can't remember actually when I woke up. But today I just weighed myself. I was 163.4. Um, which, yeah, it's up from yesterday's dehydrated weight, but that's, that's normal. But 163.4, just two days past the refeed is not bad because it theoretically should continue to drop. But the great thing is right now is this, like when I woke up and saw myself today, this is my, this is my absolute best look so far. Like in terms of leanness and still not looking like completely flat, this is, today was the best day upon waking up so do a little look I can actually see like my like that these two abs are starting to get a little pretty clear I can actually see something going on the bottom now this is quite decent never see this V cut before like the whatever you call this shiz that right there upper body you can see shoulder striations Chest is decent. Boom. Look, dude. This is a, uh, yeah. Best one so far. I remember, this is not even a good camera. This is not even the good camera. All right, y'all. Well, also, so we are on the way to the gym now. Today is leg day. And because the refi day was just two days ago, I, I do want to try to demolish my legs which means we're gonna be going for the hack squats I even got my classic shoes on the old atomics that I used when I was in Japan these I hadn't worn them in so long but they actually feel very good like they're pretty snug on the feet you feel very low to the ground very flat uh, bottom of the shoe which is great for what I like to do on legs so first I need to stop by the Asian grocery store on the way though and just grab some stuff before they close because I might not finished by the time the place closes and I need that for work. I got a lot of work. I got a lot of work to do after I get back from the gym and stuff, so it's going to be probably a pretty late night taking care of everything. But anyways, I forgot to mention though, even though, so my weight dropped from the refeed day, but I should say that yesterday I burned 3,900 calories. Like, man, the metabolism was high. I felt really good. The tennis and everything, plus the workout, ended up burning 3,900 calories, which I haven't even gotten near. I haven't even hit 3,000 recently too much, because I was just feeling that sluggish. And so because I burned 3,900 calories, I ate about 31, 3,200 yesterday, so it's still quite a deficit. But when you eat that much stuff, when you put that much stuff in your body, that is like that is physical volume. So that will also contribute to the weight. So, you know, who knows what I could actually be weighing, um, but I... Uh, it seems to be an ongoing theme. It seems to be a theme now anyways, that every time I am on the way to the gym, in the car, and I got the battery from the previous day's recordings in the camera, it always dies on me. So that's what just happened. Like I was saying though, I am predicting a new low weigh-in regardless of the current increase in weight. And also I would like to say that sometimes I do weigh myself after tennis, but I don't really count those as new low weigh-ins because it's kind of cheating. You know, after tennis, especially in Houston, you've just drawn a bunch of water out of your body because you sweat so much. And it's not really an accurate weigh-in for new low weigh-in purposes. However, I will say, if I weigh myself after tennis one day and I weigh myself after tennis another day, if I see a number that I've never seen before, like I've broken into a number that I've never seen before, I'm not gonna count that as my new low. However, I can be satisfied knowing that I am dropping weight. Now, I don't know what the weight, actual weight would be, you know? But the point is, is that because I've seen this new low that I've never seen before, the weight is going down one way or another. It's trending downward, so that's good. So I think I will see you guys at the gym for like day. It's the one disadvantage of living where I live instead of living in like the actual Houston 
or Bel Air more in the south. There's no big Asian supermarket. We just have this like local Yun Loi Asian market. All right, we got the good stuff and I got the last battery. I have three batteries. This is the last of them, this camera. So I'm probably going to be shooting some of the uh, leg exercises from the ground because it's not bad, you know, it's for legs anyways. So some of the some of the exercises I can shoot from the ground. The other ones I'll try to use this camera while it's still alive. But also in here today I have a different intro workout. It's actually Intro R3 from Hostile. This is their, their actual intro workout mix powder. And it's got, it's because besides the carbs, it does have carbs in it, but it also has a lot of other things. Like it has the Endurance Pico 2. Mm. And it's got a bunch of electrolytes. And basically it's just a bunch of things for, oh gosh, just a little bit. There's a lot of stuff for your, to maintain your level during training, as opposed to, As opposed to just the carb powder where there's no electrolytes, no Pico 2, none of that. This one's a lot more thorough. Oh, it also has a me essential amino acids, so you kind of don't just burn off all your muscle. Or something like that, so I'm taking this one on leg day, because leg day is my demolishing day, and I really need to be able to maintain my um, performance throughout, because I only do legs once a week. Uh, everything else at least gets touched twice a week. Outside of 24 hour fitness, putting the stuff in the backpack. You already know what I'm gonna say. Gotta make sure they don't forget the good stuff. Sleeves, knee sleeves. Oh yeah, if ever I'm if um, if I'm ever going to do hack squats, then I'm definitely coming 24 hour fitness because the hack squat machine, I think it's Arsenal company at a uh, legacy or legend, whatever. That thing is not good. It's not very good. It does, it's very tough on the knees, and uh, you know, you can, yeah, you can tough through it, sure. But uh, if you want to end up with raggedy knees later on, then do that. Do that hack squat. But otherwise, I'm definitely coming to 24 Hour Fitness because their hack squat machine is a lot smoother. So, ah, okay, let's do this. My lower back is like so tight. What the? Always gotta keep a peso, peso around so you can just uh, tighten your belt, you know what I'm saying? A little souvenir from, little souvenir from Mexico. All right, we are starting off, as always, with the holy trinity of leg warm-up exercises slash exercises. I say warm-up exercises because I kind of use them to warm myself up before the main motion. Oh my god, just the back squats. But these exercises are actually doing something as well, so. It's always the inner thigh, outer thigh, leg curl of some sort. Iso leg curl, not like a remainder, but the actual leg curl. And I don't care what order I do them in, as long as I do them. So, what I just open right now, which happens to be the outer thigh, which I use for the upper glute area. I don't actually hit my abs, like I don't even feel my abs as good. I feel it in like the glutes, the upper glutes, the way I do it. Three sets, first set of reps, just to warm it up. We're not trying to pull our hips, that would not be good. And then two sets of 15 with increasing weight. So I'm on my second set right now. I don't know what a good angle is. I'm just gonna put this on the machine and this might be very awkward. So I have a theory about using this machine for hitting the glutes because where I feel it, I feel it in the bottom of the glutes where it's kind of tying into the hamstrings and I feel it toward the top of the glutes. And the theory is, as you see it when I'm sitting in this thing, I'm really arched back. I don't even care if my, if my butt's in the seat. I'm arched back. I go slow until the machine's basically not offering any resistance and the stop point. And then I go out as far as I can. And if you think about it, when you're trying to flex your glutes on stage, right? You're not just relaxed low back. You're trying to really flex your glutes as hard as possible on stage and you arch your lower back and you kind of like hyper extend everything. Like, oh, you know? And that's how you actually flex all your glutes when you're on stage. So just like that, I'm not gonna round my lower back sitting in this machine because that's not how you flex your glutes on stage. So I kind of apply it in the same way a little bit. Alright, one more set of this, we're moving on to the next one. Alright, on to the inner thighs. This one's a lot more 
self-explanatory, you know what I'm saying? However, I definitely go all the way to the widest setting. Actually, this place, I've tried, uh, I think I think it's Arsenal, their brand of this machine at the other gym, and it goes even wider, which I like, because this is not, I can go wider, I can go wider. This, this is not pushing me to my limits yet in terms of how wide the thing snatches you out. Uh, so I already, we already missed the first two sets. It was a uh, first set of 20, then a set of 15, and now we're on the last terminal weight set of 15 right here. So I'm gonna post this thing up. I'm gonna try not to get too low. On the inner thighs, basically, I just hit the machine out as far wide as I can get it. And then, very important on both of the exercises, but more, even, more so even on the inner thigh. When you come in to squeeze it, you can go, technically you can go as fast as you want, but I like to go slow and let it feel the contraction. Try to hold it for a little bit. But then very important is that when you're releasing and going back out, that you do not drop the weight because that's how you can just boom, do the splits and pull your groin, strain your groin. We're not trying to do that. So really control that. I mean, honestly, on every exercise, I'm controlling that, I don't know, like eccentric or whatever it's called. It's a lot of the work's right there. I see like 50% of the work comes from the, uh, the, I don't know the word, eccentric. I'm freaking, all that jargon. But yeah, that's basically it for that one. Nothing crazy. Oh, also some people, I have heard that doing the inner thigh machine tightens your hips so that you kind of can't squat down low. I don't really feel that. Like, I don't feel like it affects me in that sense. It actually helps me open up because I'm not stretched in that area at all. So I can't really open up yet. But the way I set the machine up, it stretches me. You know, so I, that, that's how I feel it is. Anyways, we're onto this line leg curl machine, which I wanted to do the ISO leg. Like, I think it was on it, so I think it was going to use this. Two sets here, single leg, and the last set would be dual leg. Okay, so hamstring curls, line leg curls. I think hamstring curl really, but the line leg curl machine really gets you because when you go down on a line leg strip, but the line leg curl, look, here's your leg brings you down, but it's like the machine can almost bend you. And if you go too far over, and you then that's how you strain. Or that's how I will strain my hamstring. So that's why you see I go super slow on the way down to make sure I don't go too far and I just then bam! And it's done. So it's actually I have been dealing with a hamstring, like a slight small hamstring strain on my left hamstring since February. And it's still there. Because, you know, with this uh, competition in mind for like the whole year, I was like, I can't stop training here. So, I never really took a long enough break to let it heal. And I always feel a little bit of pain. So every time I go down on the left side, I have to go so much lower than the right because it hurts to the bottom. If I go too far, it's really gonna hurt. It's not that bad, it's manageable, but it is bothersome. After the competition, I'm definitely going to take a break from training hamstrings so I can let it heal all the way. But right now, I just don't feel like I can just completely stop training them. Hopefully it's like, yeah. Whenever it happened, I knew it happened too. It was just, but it's just a minor strain. It's happened plenty of times in the past. It's just in the past, I didn't have things like this to think about. I would just let it heal. But not this time. Anyways, we're now in the hack squats, warming up, acclimating to the top. So like one plate, two plate, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half. We want to get four and a half because that was the max. I'm trying to stay up there. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Right, let's take a look really quick before I get too pumped and I can't even flex. Look at this. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but this this thing right here, I've never been able to see that in my life. And I'm not even as lean as I've gotten. So that's pretty promising. So my mindset when it comes to these hack squats, uh, I don't know if you know this, but on hack squats, I only do one set. It's one set and I'm trying to demolish myself. Which means 
I don't care how long it takes me to stay under. I will stay under until I hit the whips. Or until I just absolutely can't. But I don't stop. I don't try to keep a consistent rhythm. Because when you keep a rhythm, I feel like I'm just losing air. But that's not my muscle. That's my air and lactose buildup. Or lactic acid buildup. That's stopping me. But it's not like my muscle can't keep performing. So I'll sit there and try to gather my breath. And if I can't gather my breath, then it's time to stop. Or if my legs are absolutely shaking and I can't reconstitute my muscles, then the set's over. Otherwise, I will sit under the set. Like, I'll do two, two and a half, three minute set of 15, if that's what it takes. Because I'm only doing one set. I'm not coming back for more. I'm doing one set and I'm just trying to destroy it. And for me, this has helped. This has helped a lot, I think. My overall leg density. And yeah, and also in terms of depth, I go to the depth that is at least parallel that I can feel my quads. Because the thing is, I've said this before, but as even if there's research that shows getting your knees past your toes activates more quad, that hurts my knees, which it does, because tennis has not been kind on my knees my whole life. If I keep doing that and then I break my knees, it's game over. There's not gonna be any weights. So I gotta do what I can do that still helps me. So that's my ideology behind the tax squads. Four right now, four plates. Do a quick activation of four plates, and then one activation of four and a half, and then try to hit the main set. Status update. I am very surprised I was able to get all 15 reps there because that was pretty heavy from the get go. Like, when I got to eight in my head, I was like, this is halfway. And I was like, kind of thinking, this is gonna suck. On the way to 12, I thought maybe I can't, maybe I'm not gonna be able to get more than 12. But it was really just, I don't know, it was kind of, that was kind of a lot of willpower. Because rep 15, that one, there was no need to do that last, the 15th rep, because that was, that was very difficult. That one was sketch like that. If I didn't keep it tight enough, that definitely could have uh, resulted in some pain, because that, I felt like a little tight after that 15th rep, because... 14 I was actually gone, but I just wanted to hit that number, so the weight, either the weight or the rep is, the reps are going to have to drop pretty soon here, because I'm definitely not going to be able to pick that up, but anyways, we're on to the leg press, we're probably just going to do two sets of leg press, because I just demolished myself, so two sets of leg press, and that's going to end it for the compound quad movements of the day, we look to probably eight plates, because eight and a half is when I'm fresh, Eight plates for two sets of twenty, something like that. 
a weird sensation. It's like I'm getting through like half or two thirds, you know, half of the total reps that I wanted to go for. And at that point, suddenly this like lack of energy hits me. It's almost as if I feel like I don't have enough energy stores to, to use for the rest of the reps. And I almost want to stop like right there. Once again, rep 15, I was like, I don't know if I can go more than this, but then just some, I don't know if it's stubbornness. In my head, it's just like, you're at 15, you're not suffering that bad, even though I am suffering. And then it's just telling me, just finish the set, don't pansy out. And I was able to do it. But it's weird because looking at that set, looking at the video, it's, uh, I can do it. But it feels a lot more difficult than before, even though it didn't necessarily look that way in the video. For me, it feels way harder than before. So, we're definitely going to drop it to 7, because there's no way I'm going to do the same thing of 8. Alright, leg extensions next. Same thing here. I'm gonna do on the accessories. Two sets. Except now that we're already thoroughly warmed up and our quads have been thoroughly activated, we're just gonna do two sets, not three sets. And we're gonna do the first set's gonna be single leg just to ensure a little bit of equality. And then the second set we're gonna do dual leg. And remember this like this exercise we're trying to get not just not just the tear job we're trying to like flex all the way up so we get all the way up in here so theoretically well i mean for sure when you get super lean if you've been doing this kind of thing right then you'll see the difference up top i wonder if i can magnetize this up there Since both calf raise machines are taken, we're on to this one that I rarely use, but actually feels pretty good. However, the thing is, I'm not really, uh, like I said before, I don't really need to do calves, but I'll do it anyways. Let's see if we can take a look at, like, look, look at this. Right, there it is. That's probably the, the part that I need the least. 
Look at that freaking tectonic plates in there. We don't even have calves, we have cows. Just kidding. Stick this thing right here on the machine. There we go. Very good. We can kind of see what's happening here. Okay. Fantastic. Check it out. Just knocking down two sets of 20. I did the same shit earlier. Calves being pretty small. I just like to do control. Very high reps. Also, if you think about it, a lot of tennis players have pretty good calves. Especially compared with the general population. And they're not doing heavy movement. We're just always on the balls of our feet, constantly cutting, and doing these small movements over and over. And that's how we grow our calves. Or, alternatively, you can be a fat kid when you're small and just walk around and go to growing calves. And when you lose weight when you're older, you'll just have massive calves. All right, I lost count, but I'm pretty toast now. Oh, that's good. We're good with that. Think about that, though. What fat kid do you see who's just into massive calves? All right, that was a bit out of order. Didn't, you know, normally calves last, but I don't like to wait around too long, especially towards the end, I want to just like, just get everything in. The last exercise, we're doing Romanian deadlifts against, I used to go heavier on this, but obviously now I cannot. I think I skipped it last week anyways too, so I have to do this week. But yeah, I, uh, I used to go heavier, but that is definitely not good for my messed up hamstring. So we go lighter now and just really focus on the squeezes, the contractions, the stretches. But not too much stretching, we're gonna hurt ourselves. Okay, we're gonna have to change the camera a little bit because that was just super orange. I'm not that orange. Anyways. What's this? Oh yeah, on this same thing, like every hamstring movement I do now, I gotta go down super slow. You're supposed to go down slow anyway so you can really feel the stretch. But really, for me, it's also just to prevent that hyperextension going way past where you should be going, especially too fast because, like I said, the, my right hamstring's fine. The left hamstring goes, like, it's not recovered all the way, so it's not too bad. But I don't want to F it up. Like, it's, it's only hurts slightly to train it. It's, it's fine. But if I do something dumb, it's going to get worse. And I just, I just really not trying to make it worse right now. So, we got one more set of this. That was pretty good. And then we're done. Alright, well, we are done. I am pretty sure it took about, well, it's 9 o'clock right now. I don't, can't remember when I got in there, but that definitely took a while. At least two hours. I was kind of dragging at the end. That was... That was probably the toughest leg workout so far this whole time. You know, I thought I'd feel a little better after the refeed. <laughs> However, I felt dead waking up today. Definitely because of all the activity yesterday with the tennis too. Um, I don't know if like playing through the cramps because I was getting pet cramps the whole time yesterday made me even more tired today. But yeah, I definitely woke up feeling just... I mean, to be honest, I, I was supposed to play tennis in the morning today, right? And... Uh, my friend was like, my friend said uh, he was feeling a little sore. He said he'd let me know in the morning if, if we're still on. And when I woke up and I saw the text from him that was like, oh, let's just take a break today. I'm feeling really sore. I was so relieved because I felt <laughs> pretty demolished. I felt not great. So I went back to sleep for another like four hours. Ugh. So I was relieved at that. Ooh, but yeah, we were definitely... Like the thing is, <laughs> ah, crap. Well, that was the last of them. That was the last of the batteries. They're all gone now. So, as I was saying, you would think that you get a pretty good glycogen replenishment from the refeed, which you do. However, playing tennis, that kind of cardio is way more hardcore than typical bodybuilding cardio. So you kind of just deplete a lot of it right off the bat because yeah, today, like this feeling of where you just suddenly get to the middle of a set and you're like, whoa, energy gone. And your head's kind of like making you doubt. I think that's a, uh, I think that's a, uh, we're getting a little low on glycogen again kind of thing. Because also keep in mind, glycogen is local. So it's like you have a certain amount in the legs and once it's gone in the legs, well, too bad, no more. 
So unless the glycogen from your liver, because your liver can hold like 100 to 200 grams of glycogen, unless that can be transferred. But I'm gonna have to look into that. I'm not exactly sure about that part. Oh, by the way, by the ways, thought of the day. I was gonna, I, I wanted to save this for afterwards. But, so when I met with my two friends the other day for on my rest day, doing the uh, food influencer content stuff for them, um, I, we were just talking and I was saying, yeah, doing these daily vlog things and just getting my thoughts out, putting it out there, like staying it to the camera. I don't know, somehow it makes me feel really good. Like it makes me feel, it, it, there's like some kind of release to it. And there, then both of them were like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because we journal and just writing down our thoughts and putting it on the paper, getting it all out there makes us feel better too. First of all, I was like, wait, you both journal? What the heck? Um, but yeah, so I don't know the psychology behind that. Although I would definitely would think that just keeping everything inside is not great. But not everybody can, not everybody feels like they can talk to somebody either. And not everybody has somebody they can talk to. So if there's a, if there is a way you can get it out, some people will get it out through art, you know? Some people will get it out, like, you know, music, poems, this kind of thing. Some people get it out through journaling. I think for me, it's videos. It makes me feel a lot better. Like, eh, whenever I have, like, stuff on my mind, it's like, talking to my friends helps too, of course. But sometimes I just don't want to always bring it to them. And so making videos helps me stay more mentally healthy, you know? So everybody's got their own thing, it seems. So that was very interesting to hear because at first I was I was thinking, I don't know why this is that I feel this way, but them talking about how them getting it out as well, although it be journaling, helps them feel better as well because they've each got stuff. I mean, every, everyone's got something going on at some point in their lives. There's always a little bit of something and that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you, necessarily. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna do it, guys. So thanks for tuning in. Enjoyed another day. What was that day 40? 41? Out of 130 something? Alright. Well, see you next time.